I just wanted to say rest in peace, Twee Trang, who was only 27 and she was the first of many later people to play in Power Rangers who sadly passed away. She is, of course, best known for playing the very first Yellow Power Ranger. Well, kind of. She's the first on-screen person to play, but originally the role went to a completely different actress when they filmed the pilot, but she left, and then when she left, they later hired um, Tweet. And, you know, I remember when I first saw her, all I could think was, wow, this woman is gorgeous. She is, like, stunning. She had a beautiful face, silky black hair. She's Viennese, and she had quite the journey to, like, get over here. Like, her story is one of, like, you know just like determination and like legend and stuff it's like i couldn't believe when i first like you know heard about this because like her i think her father was in like the military and then something happened and he was forced to flee and he fled to like america and her and her family actually like her brother and her mom and stuff like that when she was just like two i believe they were in detention camps and stuff. I'm like, oh my God, like from the country that she was born in, you know? And I was like, holy crap, man. Like I never knew that. And then when she was really young, about like four or five, they like, you know, got on like a cargo boat. They like, you know, got there like illegally and then they immigrated to Hong Kong and stuff. And so like... It got even worse than that. Like she went days without eating and got really sick. And she may assume she died because she just stopped moving for like the longest time. And so the people on like the boat thing, they were going to throw her overboard, but her mom refused to. And then all of a sudden she like revived and everything. And I'm like, holy crap. Like she has lived that like journey that you hear so much about from like the old days and stuff and like you know of course she came to america later on because like you know um reunited with her father and then she didn't speak english um i can't talk english <laughs> um when she first came here but she learned and then she went to college and i think she was a silver um a civil like engineer at first but then she later decided to like start up acting when like a scouting coach saw her and because you know she is like stunningly beautiful like you always hear so many people talk about like how kimberly was like their first crush and like you know how the other power rangers were like really hot and everything but nobody never really mentions her all that much and it's quite a shame because she is truly what well, was truly like stunningly gorgeous and everything and I remember when, like, she was, like, the first female Power Ranger to play, like, the role of the male Sentai person over in Japan. Because the Yellow Ranger was originally, like, a male. And they decided to, like, you know, um, make her female. And I always remember, like, you know, like, back in the original, like, early 90s of Power Rangers, they really didn't like you know like give her all that much to do which was really irritating i think she only had about three or maybe four solo episodes in the first season but really only two really revolved around her while another one revolved more around like billy and like some toy thing she had and stuff and of course, that's because they was relying on the Sentai. But every now and then, they would create their own episode, but like really rarely. But you know, they will mostly just do like whatever the Sentai had to do. But it was always quite a shame. They never really like gave her that many solo episodes. And because her character never dated nobody like Kimberly, she wasn't in the show, like um, had more to do like Kimberly and Tommy and stuff. And I remember like every Power Ranger had their own unique trait that made them like unique and stuff like you know billy was like super smart kimberly did gymnastics jason was like in the martial arts and like teaching classes 
Zach was like the dancer. And for her, it took me a good while to figure out what exactly her unique trait was because there really wasn't a true defined nature of her. Like at one point when Tommy showed up with the Evil Green Ranger thing, they tried to make her like as smart as Billy as to have him help out with like the Zords. But you never really saw that that much. And plus that would have been just stereotypical in any way, you know? But they never really showed off her smart side in that. And so like... But one thing they did have her do, like in the remember in the pilot episode, they showed her doing martial arts. And she had a very unique style of martial arts that was different from everybody else. I believe in real life she took Shaolin um, Kung Fu. And it was very, like the way she would perform it on the show was like very graceful. Like, you know, and like as opposed to being like very aggressive like everybody else. And whenever she would fight, I noticed she always had a unique fighting stance. Her hands were always open as opposed to everybody else who had like a closed fist. And I always took note of that. Like I always found that like very interesting because her fighting technique, when you come at her, she will like grab you and kind of like toss you type thing. And, you know, and other than that, she was like the sensible one, kind of like... She will always give like advice and kind of like, you know, like spirituality type of advice and stuff. So that was kind of like her identifier, even though it wasn't really specifically like well known as say like Kimberly in gymnastics or like Zach, you know, dancing around all the time. And so like, I remember, man, I was so upset in the second season when she like her and the other two left. I'm like, no, why did you leave? Because I didn't know why. They just wrote their characters off. And that was because behind the scenes, it was because of like money dispute. Because, you know, Saban, even though he's a millionaire, he is a super cheap man. Like he paid them like nickels and dimes and everything. I remember one of the Power Rangers dudes said that like people was making more minimum wage at McDonald's than they was on Power Rangers. And Power Rangers was the number one kid's show. And so after leaving Power Rangers, she did like some acting like, you know, here and there. And then she was supposed to be in Brandon's Lee. Well, she was in Brandon's Lee, um, the Crow movie. But no, was it his movie or was it another person's movie? Because um, they made several Crow movies. Um, I'm not sure. Okay, it was the Crow City of Angels. And that one was not the first one, I don't think. No, it wasn't. It was like one of the sequels and everything. And then, of course, Sally in like, you know, I think it was 2001, the start of like the new millennium and everything. She sadly passed away in a car accident. Which left a friend of hers paraplegic. And like... Man, I just like remember hearing about that. And it was just like so sad and so tragic. And you know, because it was like she was so young. Only 27. And I seen her in Power Rangers, you know. And it's like, no man, you played the superhero. You're not supposed to die and everything, you know. I just remember like, what was I? Like, I was... Uh, just now becoming an adult I was 18 at that time and you know it was just so like devastating and everything and you know I really wish she would have stayed on Power Rangers I wish like you know she had never died and like her legacy will live on of course because even though she her character technically has appeared but with the helmet on and like those weird like Nickelodeon crossover type things like reunion shows but her legacy will truly live on because in the 30th anniversary uh, uh, written by David Yost Trini the character I don't even know if I even mentioned her name was Trini but yeah, Trini like the character on the show but Trini has like a daughter now and you know because she was like you know the saber tooth tiger, yellow ranger, and mighty morphin. Now, for me, I always feel like if a actor dies in real life, they should kill the character off. Like what happened in Fast and the Fears and Brian, I always felt they should kill those characters off. Only because it's like kind of weird, like, you know, 
it would add like depth but not only that but it was kind of like you know because you're expecting to see that character at some point and it's kind of like okay well why isn't she showing up you know what i'm saying or like why well, come we can't see her older and you know and it would just help the grieving process a bit more and be a bit more in depth if you know the daughter took over you know taking up the mother's mantle you know and because it's kind of like because now with all these reunion shows you always get like these like older power ranger stars coming back and so like you know and then with tommy's character he has a kid now and so it's like okay even at an older age and with a family they're still being power rangers but then it would be kind of weird if for whatever reason she gave it up you know what i'm saying so that's why i always feel they should always kill those characters off if they have sadly passed away in like real life so may she rest in peace ah man still sad that she left